Hi, and welcome to this LIT review on respiratory distress syndrome. I'm Chris Tirienzo, a fellow in neonatal perinatal medicine at Duke University Hospital. Over the next 10 minutes or so, we'll give you a high-level overview of respiratory distress syndrome and its importance in premature infants and their outcome. We'll talk a little bit about the underpinning pathophysiology for RDS, as well as enable you to recognize presentation of RDS in your infants and begin managing. And finally, we'll touch a little bit on prevention as well. So to begin with, what is RDS? Well, a discussion about RDS really needs to begin with surfactant. As a reminder, surfactant is that mixture of lipid and protein that coats your alveoli and helps reduce surface tension. It's important to note that because at its core, RDS really is based on a surfactant deficiency. And this is the reason that historically, RDS was known as hyaline membrane disease. Because when you would look at the pathology of these lungs on cross-section, you could truly see the thickening that's associated with having surfactant deficiency and all of the remodeling that um, occurs thereafter. Predominantly, RDS is a disease of preterm infants, although it can rarely be inherited and sometimes affect very sick term infants. However, given that this is a, generally a disease of prematurity, it would help if we took a quick look back through lung development. So as you remember from your days in embryology, there are three main phases in later lung development. The canalicular phase, which is where our, our earliest viable infants are, are born at, just when you're beginning that transition from a lungs that cannot exchange gas to those who can, uh, progressing through the saccular phase, and ultimately alveolarization. Now remember, these babies aren't making surfactant until they have uh, the alveolar cells to do so. And so anyone who's really born before uh, that phase in development is going to be surfactant deficient. So remember, surfactant is a chemical that gives your alveolus resistance to surface tension and giving you a, a sense as to the pathophysiology as to what happens when you're surfactant deficient, I'd refer you to this figure from Fanaroff and Martin. Uh, the, the high level note would be that, remember, when you can't expand those alveoli, you wind up having atelectasis. And when you combine atelectasis with structural lung immaturity, you wind up with a VQ mismatch, hypoxemia, and then pulmonary vasoconstriction. Now, this can cause atelectotrauma, volutrauma, and barotrauma, and ultimately the sort of hazy granular appearance that's classic for respiratory distress syndrome. And so clinically, these babies look like they're in respiratory distress. They have the classic signs of grunting, flaring, retractions, and then when you look at their vital signs, generally these babies are hypoxic and tachypnic. Were you to check a blood gas, it would probably be hypercapnic and potentially acidotic as well. And some can have apnea as their sole presenting feature. It's critical to note that RDS generally develops within minutes to hours of life. It would be rare for an infant to be totally normal for the first couple of days and then develop signs of, of RDS at a few days of life. And then finally, there are several classic radiographic findings, which we can take a look at now. So again, in this image from Fanaroff and Martin, you can see those three classic radiographic findings for RDS. This baby has low lung volumes, a very ground glass appearance to those lung fields, and then finally air bronchograms, which are especially clear in the, the left lower and the, the right lower lung fields as well. Now, RDS is not the only disease process that can cause an x-ray to look like this, uh, but especially in, in a baby um, of the correct gestational age, giving you the right signs, it certainly should jump to very high on your list and your differential. And so what ages are we talking about when we're talking about RDS? Well, interestingly, um, one way to measure the rate of RDS is surfactant use. Since, since the development of exogenous surfactant, many babies who have RDS are able to be treated with it. This is a paper across the Neonatal Research Network published in 2010, giving you a sense as to how um, RDS is proportioned by gestational age. Now, this is an important historical note, because in the 1960s, the son of President Kennedy was born at 34 weeks, I had RDS, and died on day of life too, because at the time, we weren't able to treat RDS in the way that we are now. 1990 was really the first time that exogenous surfactant was developed and used, and, and as evidenced by this, this quote from Fanaroff and Martin, there truly has been no better intervention in the last 20 years that's had such an impact on RDS. 
And so that brings us to management. Now, babies with mild disease generally don't require exogenous surfactant. They may or may not have an oxygen requirement. They will still have signs of respiratory distress uh, that generally peak by a few days of life and then resolve on their own. Uh, babies with severe disease who are uh, profoundly hypoxic or hypercapnic are generally intubated and given surfactant. It can be given up to every 12 hours times three doses and is delivered uh, endotracheally. Interestingly, uh, one of the more critical trials in recent years in neonatology was a support trial. Uh, this randomly assigned infants to either CPAP or intubation um, within an hour of life. And this is about the age group, as you recall from the Stoll paper, uh, where you have the, the most high incidence of RDS. Uh, this trial actually showed no difference in either death or BPD, but clearly the group on CPAP had fewer ventilator days and were more likely to be both alive and not on a ventilator at day of life seven. Uh, so that trial itself has actually changed practice, and now folks will consider trying to let 24, 25, and 26 weekers uh, bridge by without requiring intubation, and that number is rising over recent years. And finally, that brings us to prevention. And so since the 1970s, there have been reports of antenatal steroids improving lung maturity. Interestingly, when studied rigorously, antenatal steroids also seem to reduce other severe comorbidities of prematurity as well. And given overwhelming data, the NIH has been um, behind the use of antenatal steroids to prevent RDS since the 1990s. Uh, the benefits are clear between 24 and 34 weeks gestation, and more recent data would suggest that antenatal steroids are actually beneficial for infants as young as 23 weeks as well. So now let's hit on outcomes. With the advent of both surfactant and antenatal steroids, clearly we've markedly improved our survival in babies who have RDS, as well as reduce their overall morbidity. Interestingly, bronchopulmonary dysplasia remains a problem. It's not directly caused by RDS, but in babies who are are experiencing severe lung disease in their first couple weeks of life and require both long-term mechanical ventilation or high amounts of oxygen, uh, these are risk factors for BPD. Our rates certainly have improved as RDS has gone down, um, but it does remain a, a significant concern. And so in summary, again, when you hear RDS, remember surfactant deficiency, but that really is only the beginning. The ultimate lung injury does derive from the, the loss of surfactant and or inactivated surfactant combined with inflammation and then the treatments necessary to overcome surfactant deficiency, including mechanical ventilation, volume trauma, pressure trauma, and atelectic trauma. The more premature you are, the higher risk you have. And then recall that management depends really on your clinical symptoms since that support trial, either uh, CPAP if symptoms are mild um, or intubation and exogenous surfactant. And then finally, antenatal steroids do have a benefit and a role for moms who are in preterm labor in terms of reducing RDS and reducing multiple other neonatal morbidities as well. I've included the following seven references for your perusal. I've noted Fanaroff and Martin is, is a key reference that I would point you to as one of the, the, the key textbooks in neonatology and has a very a helpful chapter on RDS.